Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dougie Doug and this is the Wrestling Week Recap. This is a new addition to my channel and in these videos I will pick one thing from Raw, NXT, Dynamite, and Smackdown to recap and discuss. And what's that? Let's get into the recap for this week. Starting with Monday Night Raw, Brother vs. Brother at WrestleMania, Jay Uso vs. Jimmy Uso. So this match has not been made official, but I think we can all agree that it is a matter of when and not if in regards to this match. So WWE set the stage for a battle of brothers back at SummerSlam 2023 when Jimmy Uso cost Jay Uso the Universal Championship and the title of Tribal Chief. Since then, Jimmy has cost Jay the undisputed WWE Tag Team Jabra and the Intercontinental title. This has to be the breaking point for Jay setting up the WrestleMania match both men have always wanted. In the past year since the Usos main event at WrestleMania 39, Jay has passed his brother in terms of popularity and success. Even if Jimmy has stopped him from winning gold, Jimmy has played a supporting role for Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa, and he's barely allowed to stand out on his own. This match at WrestleMania should be Jimmy's moment. This is a chance for him to show he can match his brother in the ring, earning the top contest both men have prepared for since they started wrestling. So who is the better Uso? My guess would be Jay on that one. I think Jay would win this match between the two of them. NXT. So NXT, not a very good show this week. Very flat. The women's championship match had some potential to be good. However, unfortunately, Shotzi would suffer an injury tearing her ACL. And because it was a taped show, you got to see the moment play out. And give credit to Valkyrie and Lash Legend for improvising on the fly. Having a solid tie, nothing too crazy. They made do, again, made do with what they got. So yeah, that match between Valkyria and Shotzi barely got going before Shotzi tore her ACL. Ava would then announce that there would still be a women's championship match with an open challenge. Lash Legend would answer, much to the dismay of Roxanne Perez. She dominated the Valkyrie until the champion dropped her off the second rope and hit a diamond splash from the win. This was, like I said, a, uh, an unfortunate situation. Best wishes to Shotzi on a full recovery from her ACL tear. Hopefully she can come back better than ever and get more opportunities like this to show her ability. To their credit, Valkyria and Legend did what they could afterward to give the fans a title match. It wasn't a clean fight, but Legend showed up her more of her growing in-ring arsenal. Uh, Valkyria worked from underneath. The finish was rushed. Uh, but it was all called on the fly. It's impressive that the two are able to string together anything with their shared experience and the need to immediately improvise. But Okiria would have likely retained her title no matter what, as the money is still on a Valkyria versus Roxanne Perez match at Stand and Deliver on April 6th. Dynamite. So... This show got off to a hot start with PCC versus FTR, a match that would end in a draw with a rematch set for a revolution. Last I checked the card, that match has not been made official, but FTR threw down the challenge, and I can only imagine, and I can't imagine Tony Khan saying no to this, so. Yeah, and the fans wanted five more minutes. Well, they're going to get a whole rematch at Revolution instead. The rest of the show didn't quite match up to this contest. It wasn't a bad show, but... Certainly didn't beat the high bar that the opening contest set. This was not a technical clinic, despite the beta competitors in this match being technicians. But it was still a fun, hard-hitting fight that made all four guys look tough. This match kept getting better as it went. Every time the announcer revealed how much time was left, it added to the sense of urgency. The bell rang as FTR as well hit the shadow machine, making it a draw. The crowd began chanting five more minutes, and when both teams started fighting, the ref called for security to break it up, and they would keep finding ways to fight despite dozens of people trying to keep them apart. Eventually, they would succeed, which then leads to the backstage. From a segment from FTR that basically goes out the challenge for a rematch, and almost leads to a backstage brawl between these two teams. And lastly, we have Friday Night Smackdown with the megastar L.A. Knight. Yeah, taking on Drew McIntyre in the main event and a highly contested match between these two ended in chaos as the six men involved in the men's elimination chamber match prowled to close the show. The match itself was rolling along just fine. 
However, with Kevin Owens and Logan Paul on, on at ringside on commentary, you knew some shenanigans was going to ensue. And sure enough, shenanigans ensued. Kevin Owens got laid out when McIntyre threw Knight into him, which led Owens to attack McIntyre, causing the match to end at a disqualification, which, let's be real here, that was probably about the best way this match was going to end. I couldn't really see either one of these guys taking a pinfall loss, so I'm okay with the disqualification finish, even if it is a shame that we didn't get a definitive finish to this matchup. So yeah, disqualification happens, cue the brawl, and exchange of finishers between the competitors. Lashley did have his arm injured early in the night, but he appears, but it doesn't seem like he will be missing Elimination Chamber at all. And Randy Orton hit an RKO out of nowhere to close out the show and certainly send the crowd home happy. The match between LA Knight and McIntyre was good. And like I said, it's a shame that there was not a definitive end to it, but this did exactly what it set up to do and that it hyped the men's chamber match. It was an emphatic exclamation point to the broadcast. If nothing else, a solid go home show from WWE right before Elimination Chamber. And for those of you wondering if I will be catching the show live, the answer is no. It's on at 4 a.m. my time, which is Central Time. I will be busy in the morning and will not be able to watch it. So I will have to be catching the replay of it later in the afternoon. And be sure to tune in. I don't know. It will be Saturday. Maybe probably Saturday nights, I will say. And there will be a WWE discussion episode on Elimination Chamber. So yes, WWE discussion and AEW discussion are not going anywhere. Uh, but WWE discussion and AEW discussion will be re folk will just solely be focused on premium live events and the pay-per-view. So yeah, those aren't going anywhere. They're just kind of getting refocused towards just singular things rather than just trying to have them all directed at all the shows and just pump out a bunch of videos over the course of one week, which is how we get to the recap where it's just one video talking about all four shows and it's just one video a week. So with that, that will conclude this edition of the Wrestling Week Recap. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below.